Hello everyone, Tom Davis here, America's Canon Educator. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you how to introduce a dog to the treadmill. So the treadmill is good for multiple different reasons, but if you live in a place like here in upstate New York, it gets really hot in the summers, it gets really crappy and cold in the winter. So the treadmill gives you an opportunity to exercise your dog when you're unable to walk your dog because of the environments. <laughs> is a dog pacer so this isn't sponsored this isn't endorsed it's just something that I thought was pretty pretty inexpensive but also high quality because some of them get really really expensive like three to five thousand dollars I picked this one up brand new for about 600 bucks and so far we like it a lot so we have a eight month old Malinois he is our board and train uh, his name's Finn he got here yesterday it is absolutely miserable out I'll montage to how crappy it is out later and I'm gonna introduce the treadmill to him and this is something that you guys can do at home. With the treadmill, you can do it with human treadmills. I've heard of people doing that before, that's totally fine. The reason why the, the, this treadmill is specifically for dogs is because it's narrow enough so the dog can't escape and it's also got these little, um, I guess, rails or protector things on the side to um, discourage the dog from going sideways or walking off. So. Moral of the story is, is I'm gonna teach this dog on how to walk on the treadmill. All right, so typically what I like to do to introduce the treadmill is teach the dog to go on it first. So this guy is very food motivated. Obviously he's pretty confident and curious of what this is. So I'm just gonna reward him for getting on first. So it's not gonna be this easy for most dogs. Most dogs are not gonna just walk on like that. Um, again, I think he's just a curious, young, confident dog and he just did that. So that's really good signs. If your dog takes a little bit more time, um, spend a couple days on getting this association to be really positive because if it's something that you're gonna use daily or a lot and you just paid a bunch of money for, you don't want this to ever be a negative thing. So you wanna introduce this as slow and as positively as possible. So this is the first time he's ever been on this thing um, and, I, and I can probably say that it's not gonna be that easy for you guys at home, but um, I'm gonna go through the process anyway. Quick, good, hey buddy. Boy, good boy, good job, big man. So what I like to do, um, and again, this is, everything that we talk about here on the channel is generalized to what I do. This isn't the best way to do it. This isn't the only way to do it. It's just better information instead of scratching your head going, hey, I wonder how I could get my dog on the treadmill. This is how I do it. So I use a bungee, like four foot little leash, so it has some bungee to it. Um, and then we just use a harness. One thing that you never want to do when you're doing this type of work, this probably isn't going to fit him, but that's okay, is uh, you never want to put a correction collar on a dog, or if you're going to use a flat collar, the dog should be very, very used to the treadmill um, because you definitely don't want them pulling themselves and choking themselves by uh, correction or anything. So you want to get all the collars out of the harness. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Finn. Good. And then you're going to start on a low level. You just turn it on, and then what I do is I start it literally on the lowest level it has, and then we have a chair here, and we encourage the dog to move forward with food. Good boy. There's a big man. Good boy. Good boy, Finn. And just rewarding, lots of positive reinforcement. Good boy. Good job. And I didn't do the harness because he's a big boy. It doesn't fit, so good boy. So now I can see he's getting comfortable. He's pawing at my hands for the food. He's not caring about the treadmill going. So then I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. And there you can see a little bit of concern. So you just wait for him to get over that concern before you turn it up again. So you go up in little increments and little steps. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good. And again, this is very generalized. You could get a dog on here that completely freaks out, which we've had, and jumps and screams and poops on the treadmill and all that stuff. Um, this is, He's a really good student. This is exactly what we would want to see in teaching a dog on how to go to a treadmill. So this particular um, treadmill gives you time, speed, distance, and calories burned, which is awesome. <laughs> so he's really comfortable. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more. Um, and then it also has this little safety clip that we use where we can put it on the dog. Dog hair in my mouth, welcome to my life. And if it ever, if he ever fell off or God forbid he did that, 
It would shut off immediately if he got too far off of the treadmill. Good. So it's best to do this without a lot of distraction um, because you don't want the dog paying attention to other things because his ground is actually moving. Um, so I just, he's right, he's on a two right now, a 2.1. Um, some dogs can literally sprint on these things um, and it's perfectly okay. And so right now he's still trying to figure it out. He's still taking food. If your dog is taking food and accepting food from you, they're not too stressed. Uh, if a dog is completely shut down or stressed, that's when they're, they will disapprove food and they'll turn it away. Um, but he's doing really good. Boy, good boy. So I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. Good boy, Finny. Good. And you can tell uh, his gait hasn't changed at all, so this is not a hard walk for him at all. His paws are actually on the edge of the treadmill almost every stride and every step. So it's not like he can't catch up and, and keep up with this pace. So he's been going for two minutes and 40 seconds now, which is two minutes and 40 seconds more than what he ever got sitting in his kennel because it's raining and it's icy and it's crappy out. And so you can pretty much go up in increments as comfortable as your dog will allow you to do. If you start getting up to, like if you go up two and he's good, wait there for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then keep going up in increments, especially if it's a dog you don't know. If this is your dog and they're comfortable with you, you could go up a lot faster, a lot quicker. Um, but this is a dog that we just got in. I know nothing about him, um, but I do know that he's a young dog that needs exercise, so that's what we're doing with him now. Um, so I guess what I would say is, is if your dog starts freaking out, go back down to a smaller level for a long period of time and then give them a break and then try it again later and try to go up in increments later. Boy. So I'm gonna turn it up to a 3.6. I'm just gonna hold his, his chest area. Good boy. I don't know why, but a lot of times if you just hold like right in their chest, like their throat area, they, they love it. I, I'm not sure why, but it just comforts them. It's like right in their sweet spot when they're on this thing. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Good. So, so far he's gone 0.1 miles. So depending on the breed, depending on how conditioned and how comfortable your dog is on this thing, you could get, some dogs would run two miles, 10 miles, really just depends on your dog and the conditioning that they have. But the most important thing with anything when you're working with your dog is to do it incrementally and not make anything that you're gonna use on a regular basis negative. So this is all positive for him. So now I could give him a break, take him off, do some obedience with him, put him away and then come back out and then he's gonna be all aboard for this thing again. So it gives us an opportunity to walk the dog for as long as we need to in any climate, any time of the day, which is invaluable to a young dog that needs this physical exercise. And so there's really no excuse for anybody to say that they can't exercise their dog. If you can afford one of these, put some money away. If you're, if you're unable to physically give your dog what you need, Spend and invest the $600 to put this into your room, put this into your garage or your basement, get your dog used to it and walk them every day. If you can't get out, I understand that, but to get this and provide this for your dog is invaluable to them. It's the least you can do. And so I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you did, of course, we're the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. All you have to do is leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this. Let me know if you helped, it helped you. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do that. It's the only way you can support me. Um, like this video, of course, share it with anybody who maybe needs to exercise their dog a little bit more per day and you can see exactly the benefits of this. Again, this is a young dog. He's gone 0.2 miles right now. Um, he's at 4.5 right now. Come on, buddy. Lots of encouragement. Um, and it's really rewarding to the dog. And it's, it's, a, it's a relationship thing. Good boy. And then one thing I will add before we wind down this video is when you do stop the, uh, the session. So he's at like six minutes and 40 seconds. So I'm gonna end it here. It's just like with us. You don't wanna kill the switch because the dog will freak out. And if you get a sensitive dog, and you freak him out on this, it might be all over Johnny. So what you do is you just slow down, slow, 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 until you get down to a low level. And then there you can take the dog off and that's it. So that's it.